Welcome to Garland's Modified Flashing Details Series 1, Application Excellence Video. This series focuses on the details and the skilled workmanship to correctly install some of the crucial flashings found on a variety of building systems protected by a modified bitumen roofing system. These details include penetrations, terminations, through wall flashings, and drains. Penetrations are any disruption in the field of the membrane system. Penetrations may include but are not limited to pipes, conduit, vents, penetrating equipment supports, and a variety of curbs. Terminations are the treatment or method of anchoring and or sealing the free edges of the membrane system. They may occur at wall flashings and metal edges. A through wall flashing is a material assembly extending through a wall and its cavities, positioned to direct any water entering above the flashing to the exterior. Drains are outlets used to collect and direct the flow of runoff water from a roof area and can be found within the field of the membrane and or at the perimeter of the system. Drainage systems may include internal drains, scuppers, and gutters. It is important to reference both International Building Code and local requirements regarding location and the number of primary and overflow drains for individual building compliance. The specific details covered in this series are Piped plumbing, stack, wall flashing, curbs, equipment, and roof hatch, drains, internal, and scupper. A typical penetration that can be found on a variety of buildings is a plumbing stack. Plumbing stacks allow for the proper ventilation of sanitary lines contained within the building. The following are the recommended installation steps for a pipe plumbing stack. Minimum stack height is 12 inches above the field of the roofing system. Seal the base of the plumbing stack with elastomeric sealant. Install properly sized sleeves set in a 1 quarter inch bed of roof cement. The flange should extend a minimum of 4 inches onto the field of the membrane in all directions. Next, prime the flange of the new lead sleeve with the appropriate primer based upon the bitumen utilized in the installation of the field plies. Turn sleeve a minimum of 1 inch down inside the stack. Install base flashing plies in bitumen a minimum of 8 inches on the field of the roofing system. Install membranes in bitumen a minimum of 12 inches on the field of the roofing system. Caulk the intersection of the membrane and the vertical surface of the plumbing stack with polyurethane sealant. As shown in the details, the major difference between the three details is the attachment of the counter flashing over the termination bar. The counter flashing provides critical protection to the termination bar, and the termination bar provides support and waterproofing at the union between the wall and the flashing membranes. As attachment of the counter flashing may vary with both the reglet and through wall details based on the construction material of the wall, it is important to review the project conditions with your local Garland representative. Minimum flashing height is 8 inches and maximum is 24 inches. Prime vertical wall at a rate of 100 square feet per gallon and allow to dry. Set cant strip in bitumen. Run all field plies over cant a minimum of 2 inches. Install base flashing ply covering wall set in bitumen with 6 inches onto the field of the roof. Install a second ply of modified bitumen over the base flashing 9 inches onto the field of the roof. Apply a three-course application of mastic and mesh at all vertical seams. Allow for curing time and follow-up with the application of a reflective coating. Secure termination bar through flashing, butyl tape, and into wall. <music> Curbs are raised members used to support roofing penetrations, such as skylights, mechanical equipment, and hatches above the roofing surface. Minimum curb height is 8 inches. In the following section, you will see both an equipment and roof hatch as examples of a curb. Typical installation steps are as follows. Prime vertical surface at a rate of 100 square feet per gallon and allow to dry. Set cant strip in bitumen. Run all field plies over cant a minimum of 2 inches. Install the base flashing ply, covering curb set in bitumen with 6 inches onto the field of the roof. Install a second layer of modified flashing ply in bitumen over the base, 9 inches onto the field of the roof. 
Attach top of membrane by appropriate securement method, typically based at 8 inches on center. See specific detail for more information. Apply a three-course application of mastic and gar mesh at all vertical seams. Allow for recommended curing time and follow up with an application of a reflective coating. Install pre-manufactured cover. Fasten sides at 24 inches on center with fasteners and neoprene washers. Furnish all joint cover laps with butyl tape between metal covers. Set equipment on neoprene pad and fasten as required by equipment manufacturer. Typical waterproofing of a new or existing internal roof drain includes the following steps. Plug drain to prevent debris from entering plumbing. For projects that include insulation, insulation should be tapered to drain a minimum of 24 inches from the center of the drain. This process is also known as sumping the drain and serves to increase the flow of water to the drain and off the field of the roofing system. Run roof system plies over drain. Cut out plies inside drain pole. Set the lead or copper flashing, 30 inch square minimum, set in a 1 quarter inch bed of roof cement. Run the lead or copper into the drain a minimum of 2 inches. Prime the lead or copper at a rate of 100 square feet per gallon and allow to dry. Install base flashing ply, 40 inch square minimum, in bitumen. Install the modified membrane, 48 inch square minimum, in bitumen. Install clamping ring and assure that all plies are under the clamping ring. Remove drain plug and install strainer. Typical installation of the through wall scupper includes the following steps. Inspect the nailer to assure proper attachment and configuration. Run one ply over nailer into scupper hole and up the flashing as in a typical wall flashing detail. Assure coverage of all wood nailers. Install a scupper box in a 1 quarter inch bed of mastic. Assure all box seams are soldered and have a minimum 4 inch flange. Make sure all corners are closed and soldered. Fasten flange of scupper box every 3 inches on center staggered. Prime scupper at a rate of 100 square feet per gallon and allow to dry. Strip in flange of scupper box with base flashing ply covering entire area with 6 inch overlap onto the field of the roof and wall flashing. Install a second layer of modified flashing ply and bitumen over the base, 9 inches onto the field of the roof. Apply a three-course application of mastic and mesh at all seams. There are four key components to any successful roof system. One, specific specifications and details tailored for the particular project. Two, quality products. Three, skilled workmanship. And four, regular inspections during and after the installation. This application excellence video focused on the details and the skilled workmanship to correctly install some of the crucial details found on a variety of building systems protected by a modified bitumen roofing system. While the techniques shown here may be applied to most projects, this video is not comprehensive to cover all situations. Always refer to your local Garland representative for particular details pertaining to your job. We encourage you to contact your local Garland representative with any questions. Music